design of earth retaining structures rcc cantilever retaining wall this is the most commonly used earth retaining rcc structure it is economical to use cantilever rcc retaining wall for up to 8 meters where pp is the active pressure which is exerted by the retain earth on the wall retain earth okay so this is the active pressure which is exerted on the wall okay and pp is the passive pressure which resists the wall movement okay this is pp which resists the wall movement okay this pressure is very small and usually neglected in design surcharge surcharge frequent gravity loads act on the level backfill this is level backfill gravity loads acts on level back backfill due to the construction of building and movement of vehicles near the top of the retaining wall which exerts lateral pressure on the retaining wall this additional load can be assumed to be static or uniformly distributed on the top of the backfill this can be assumed to be static and uniformly distributed on the backfill with a, a unit of kilo newton per meter square so this is a slope backfill this is level backfill over here you will have a uh, active pressure pa at inclination theta this is theta with the horizontal and you will have an horizontal component pa cos theta and vertical component pa sin theta okay pa cos theta will uh, Will, will be the cause for the movement or will give an overturning moment and PA sin theta will be helpful in resisting the overturning moment, right? Over here, this is the uh, pressure distribution due to soil, this is due to surcharge and this is due to water, this is ground water table, okay? Coefficient of active pressure over here can be found by this formula. Coefficient of uh, passive pressure can be found by this formula over here you can find the coefficient of active pressure by this formula coefficient of passive pressure can be found in this formula okay now stability requirements clause 20.1 overturning okay the stability of a structure as a whole against overturning shall be ensured so that the restoring moment shall not be less than the sum of 1.2 times the maximum overturning moment due to the characteristic dead load and 1.4 times the maximum overturning moment due to the characteristic imposed loads. In case where the dead load provides the restoring moment, only 0.9 times the characteristic load shall be considered. Restoring moment due to the imposed load shall be ignored. Okay. Now this is our uh, retaining wall cantilever retaining wall we can see that pa uh, this is the active pressure it causes an overturning moment it is also known as de destabilizing moment okay and the dead weight dead weight of stem backfill footing surcharge etc they cause a stabilizing moment you can say restoring moment okay so we fall in this case in case where dead load provides the restoring moment over here dead load are providing restoring moment so so we will have to take 0.9 times the characteristic load okay and restoring moment due to the imposed load will be ignored right so the formula is factor of safety is equal to 0.9 into stabilizing force or moment divided by destabilizing force or moment this should be greater than 1.4 right so in our case it will be this is our uh, stabilizing moment okay ms so 0.9 times ms divided by mo is over turning moment that should be greater than equal to 1.4 okay now clause 20.2 sliding the structure have shall have uh, safety factor against sliding of not less than 1.4 under the most adverse combination of the applied characteristic forces in this case only 0.9 times the characteristic load shall be taken in account so this is the active pressure which tries to move the uh, cantilever wall and this is the frictional force at the bottom of the base slab and the soil which try to resist this moment okay so this f is equal to mu into r where mu is the moment of resistance and r is the resultant force that is addition of all the dead weights which are helpful in uh, resisting the uh, giving uh, resisting the overturning of the structure okay 
So Fs is equal to 0.9 into F divided by PA cos theta. Okay. When the uh, backfill is labeled, theta is 0. So cos theta is equal to 1. That, is, that will become PA. Okay. When your backfill is uh, inclined, then you will have cos theta in picture. Right. So this should be greater than or equal to 1.4. Right. When the active pressure PA is relatively high, it may be difficult to obtain the required factor of safety against sliding through the frictional resistance below the footing alone. Okay. In such cases, the, it is advantageous to use a shear key projection below the footing base extending throughout the length of the ball as shown in figure below. So in that case, it is better to provide a shear key. Okay when your factor of safety is found to be less than 1.4 okay. proportioning of the cantilever wall okay this is our cantilever uh, rcc retaining wall okay so h1 h1 is the depth of the footing okay so it is uh, given by this formula now assuming base width b okay this is b this is a, a thumb rule you can uh, use this formula and and get a value of b okay pa is the total active pressure acting on the wall due to the backfill surcharge and water okay assuming the weight of the toe slab equal to b by 3 okay the width of toe we will assume as b by 3 okay because we want to keep our resultant r uh, uh, to, uh, we, we, we want to make our resultant R fall in the middle third of portion of the base slab. Okay, this R should fall in the middle third of the base slab. Okay, so that there will be no negative pressure, right? That is why. So then next is assuming thickness of the stem at the base T. Okay it is taken between h by 8 to h by 12 this is h okay assuming thickness of uh, base slab d this is d between h by 12 to h by 15 okay now critical sections uh, for the calculation of design moment okay are as shown in below for stem at the base of the stem for heel at the face of the stem and for toe at the face of the stem okay so you have to find the moments at this section for which stem toe and heel are designed okay critical section for shear check as shown in figure okay at a section d uh, from the uh, face of the stem okay this is effective depth d this effective depth d is equal to capital d minus effective cover so for hill you have to check one way shear at this section for toe over here at this section for stem at a section d dash where d dash is t minus effective cover of the stem okay okay now how to find the distance of the resultant force r from o1 okay so we'll try to learn that so over here this is a uh, backfill this is a surcharge this is the ground table, uh, groundwater table line, okay? And we are assuming that the density of surcharge and the, the backfill are same, okay? So, this is the pressure diagram due to surcharge. This is the pressure diagram due to backfill. And this is the pressure diagram due to the water, okay? So, this three pressures together will cause an overturning moment and the dead weight of this wall and uh, surcharge and the backfill will give in resisting moment right so first we will find what is the force pa1 okay pa1 what is pa1 pa1 is equal to ca into density of surcharge into hs what is hs hs is the fictitious height okay of this uh, surcharge which is uh, calculated as ws divided by the density of surcharge okay so this pa1 is equal to ca into uh, surcharge density into hs into h this is h okay so pa1 is equal to this much right now of pa2 p2 
PA2 is equal to CA into density of soil into H, okay, this is H into 0.5, okay, CA into density of soil into H into H into 0.5, okay, so this is equal to uh, this, okay, now PA3 is equal to density of water into H1 into H1 into 0.5, okay, now W1 is the weight of stem, height of stem into width of stem into 25 that is the density of rcc concrete okay now w2 is the weight of backfill plus the surcharge okay as the density is same so it is i have taken together right otherwise this would be w2 and this would be some say w4 okay so w2 is equal to this height okay so total height is h plus hs minus d okay that is equal to this height into width of hill into density of soil okay so that is equal to the weight of uh, soil and backfill and the searcher right now weight of this base is w3 width of this base slab okay you can say length into depth into 25 unit weight of R RCC concrete right so that is equal to w3 so r is equal to w1 plus w2 plus w3 now we want to find the distance x from a uh, distance x of resultant r from the point o1 okay point o1 so what we will do we'll take the moments about o1 pa1 into h by 2 pa2 into h 1 by 3 h pa3 into 1 by 3 h1 w2 into this distance w1 into this distance w3 into this distance okay all this moment divided by r okay will give us x okay so this is how we get x from the distance o1 okay so once you find x we can find the eccentricity eccentricity is equal to b by 2 minus x okay b by 2 minus x this is the center of the footing okay if x is greater than b by 2 then e will be equal to x minus b by 2 if b by 2 is greater than x then e will be equal to b by 2 minus x okay this eccentricity e should be less than b by 6 or you can say r should fall in middle third of the of, uh, footing okay baseline right now let us try to understand uh, this through an example okay determine the suitable dimension for a cantilever retaining wall which has to support a backfill of 4.25 meters above the ground level and its foundation is rested one meter below the ground level where good soil is available so this is our ground level and we have to retain 4.25 meters earth above that and the foundation is at one meter below okay the surface of level backfill makes an angle 15 degrees with the horizontal and the internal angle of friction is 35 degrees so this is 15 degrees and phi is 35 degrees right unit weight of backfill is 18 kN per meter cube this is backfill okay and the safe bearing capacity of the soil is 150 kN per meter square assume the coefficient of friction is 0.55 now this is our figure so this is 15 degrees so this force is also pa will also act as a 15 degree right it will give an horizontal component pa cos theta which will be the active pressure okay and and another component vertical component will be a pa sin theta will be will be helping in restoring moment right so now let us proceed further total height of the retaining wall h is 4.25 plus 1 meter okay now p as uh, sorry this is theta okay this has to be theta theta is equal to 15 degrees okay phi is equal to 35 degrees a coefficient of uh, friction mu is equal to 0.55 unit weight of soil is equal to 18 kilonewton per meter square okay safe bearing capacity q is equal to 150 kilonewton per meter cube unit weight is in kilonewton per meter cube okay uh, so ca is found by this formula and it is uh, we know theta is uh, 50 phi is uh, 35 so ca is 0.297 cp is uh, 0.369 okay we are neglecting active uh, pa sorry passive pressure because uh, 
passive pressure helps in resisting the movement okay so we are neglecting that so that we will be a little bit on more safer side okay because this pressure is uh, very small okay passive pressure is very small so it is good to neglect it in our design okay now let us first set the preliminary dimension of the section so approximate um, active pressure pa is equal to c into lamp uh, soil density into s square divided by 0.5 at present we are taking h is equal to 4.25 plus 1 that is 5.25 meters so actual h is this okay but we don't know the dimension so now we are just moving forward by finding approximate uh, pa by with the side okay okay so pa is found to be 73.67 kilo newton per meter square assuming uh, base width b equal to this formula that is equal to 2.4 477 let us assume the width of the base equal to 2.575 okay so we are assuming width as 2.575 right base width right now let us assume the width of toe that is equal to b by 3 that is 0.858 and we will take uh, the width of toe as 0.85 okay width of toe we are taking as 0.85 right okay now moving for further uh, let us assume uh, the thickness of the stem uh, that is between h by 8 to h by 12 we will take h by 10 that is equal to 0.525 meters so 0.5 to 5 meters okay All right now the width of hill slab simple b minus width of toe minus thickness of vertical stem okay so this is equal to this minus this minus this that is equal to one by two meters now once you know this you can find this right so this is equal to 1.2 plus 0.525 minus 0.15 this we are taking as 0.15 meters right top right so 1.2 minus uh, uh, sorry 1.2 plus uh, bracket in bracket 0.525 minus 0.15 that will that is equal to 0.1575 so once you know this you can find this height okay theta is known 15 degrees this is known so this comes out to be 0.42 so this total height is 5.67 meters okay so now we will find the actual value of pa okay okay height is found to be 5.675 so p is the uh, total uh, pressure acting on the wall uh, due to the backfill okay so pa is uh, ca into soil density into h square into 0.5 now h we will take it as 5.67 okay 5.67 so this is our actual value of pa 85.93 now vertical horizontal component is pa cos theta which is equal to 83 a vertical component is pa sin theta that is equal to 22.24 right now we will do the check against uh, stability against overturning so first we will find the overturning moment mo mo what is mo okay mo is overturning moment is obtained by this vertical uh, horizontal uh, component this into h3 this is the overturning moment right so pa cos theta into h3 will give us the overturning moment uh, so that is equal to 156.87 now we have to find the resisting moment okay the first we will have to find the resultant vertical forces okay table for action of resultant vertical forces for one meter width of wall about the edge of toe so first weight of rectangular portion of the vertical stem weight of rectangular portion of the vertical stem this is a vertical we are taking the rectangular portion of this part right so this is 0.15 into 4.8 into 25 right is the 25 is a unit weight right so 4.8 into 1.5 to 25 that is equal to 18 weight of triangular portion of the vertical stem so this is the part okay that is uh, this is going to be 5.25 minus 0 0.15 into 4.8 into 25 okay so that is equal to 22.5 weight of soil on the hill up to the top of the wall okay weight of soil up to the top of the wall so we are taking this section right so simple take the average width 1.2 plus 1.575 divided by 2 into 4.8 into soil density 
okay so that is going to the weight right now weight of soil on the hill slab above the top of the wall okay so now we will take this area okay so that is equal to 1.575 into 0.42 into 0.5 into soil density okay so we'll get that weight okay so we there now weight of slab base slab weight of base slab width that is 2.575 into 0.45 into 25 okay so that gives us 28.96 and the vertical component ps sin theta that is 22.24 so adding this we get w which is r that is equal to 2.17 a uh, 217.53 okay now we have to find the moment about toe so find the distance of cg of each element about uh, from the toe right so uh, for uh, cg of this rectangular portion from the toe edge is equal to 0.85 plus this rectangular portion is which is 0.15 so 0.15 divided by 2 plus 0.85 is the distance of cg from the edge of the toe okay so that is how we get 0.925 meters similarly find the distance and you can find the moment so adding this you get the resisting moment okay so our formula is 0.9 into resisting moment divided by mo that's 0.9 into 374 divided by 0.2 divided by 156.87 156.70 is a more overturning moment right so this is equal to 2.146 which is greater than 1.4 so it is safe okay now very important point check the resultant loading eccentricity e lies within the middle third of the footing okay so we have to check our r should fall in the middle third of the uh, base slab otherwise we will have to revise the size okay because we will get the negative pressure okay now simple we know the resisting moment we know the overturning moment so resisting moment minus overturning moment divided by r, r will give you the distance of the resultant force from the edge of the toe okay so this is known this is known okay so this is equal to one meter so r falls at a distance one meter from the edge of the toe we have to find x simple b minus this is equal to x okay so x equal to b minus 1 is equal to 1.575 okay now we want to find e if x is greater than b by 2 e is equal to x minus b by 2 our x is greater than b by 2 so e is equal to x minus b by 2 is equal to 0.287 e is equal to 0.287 meters okay so we can see that that is less than b by 6 this is b by 6 b by 6 is 0.429 okay so our resultant r falls within the middle one third of the base slab so it is okay and safe now check for stability in sliding sliding force we know horizontal component is pa cos theta is equal to 83 kilometer per meter okay <clears throat> uh, ignoring the passive force pp okay so resist, uh, resisting force f due to friction is equal to mu into r coefficient of friction is 0.55 r is equal to 27 217.53 okay so f is equal to 119.64 kilonewton okay so our formula is 0.9 f divided by pa cos theta so that is equal to 1.297 which is less than 1.4 so which is not safe so we will have to provide a shear key so assuming a shear key of size a by a okay and the shear key is uh, uh, you know uh, shear key is uh, we are going to keep the shear key, shear key at a distance 1.3 meters from the edge of the toe okay now we know that our foundation is at one meter below the ground level okay now we are making an assumption okay that the top one uh, one feet or you can say 300 mm uh, is loose soil and is not going to be helpful in uh, providing the passive uh, pressure right so we are neglecting this height so we'll be taking only uh, 0.7 meters height effective for uh, giving the passive pressure right now we are assuming a 
to be a 0.4 so h1 is equal to 0.7 plus 0.4 is equal to 1.1 uh, meter h2 is equal to 0.7 meters right we want to find the passive pressure which will be developed due to this shear key so we'll find first the pressure due to this diagram okay and that is uh, cp into soil density into h1 into h1 into 0.5 so that is pp1 that is 40.18 and we will find the second uh, pressure passive pressure due to this diagram unshaded portion right so that will be equal to cp into soil density into h2 into h2 into 0.5 so that is equal to 16.27 so PA1 minus PP2 will be the passive pressure which will be uh, exerted by this shear key, right? So that pressure is found to be 23.91. Okay, so PP acts in this direction, PA cos theta acts in this direction. The resultant is PA cos theta minus PP. Okay, so PA cos theta minus PP. So 0.9 F divided by PA cos theta minus PP, which is equal to 1.82, which is greater than 1.4. So now it is safe in uh, check for stability for sliding, right? So provide a shear key of 0.4 meters by 0.4 meters, right? Now we will take in another example where we will do the complete design, okay? First we will assume the section and also do the uh, design of steel, right? Okay. Design a cantilever retaining wall which has to support a backfill of 4.25 meters above the ground level and the foundation to be rested one meter below the level of the uh, the level where the good soil is available okay so this is ground level about that 4.25 meters uh, backfill is to be uh, supported okay and the foundation is one meter below okay so this height total height is 5.25 meters right okay the angle of internal friction is 35 means phi is 35 degrees unit weight of a uh, back unit weight of backfill and surcharge are same that is 18 kilonewton per meter cube and safe bearing capacity of the soil is 150 kilonewton per meter square assume the coefficient of friction to be 0.55 and a surcharge of uh, 30 kilonewton per meter square okay so WS, that is weight of surcharge is 30 kN per meter square. Design the retaining uh, cantilever retaining wall structure. Use M20 grade of concrete and Fe415 steel. Okay. So we can see that this is uh, pressure due to uh, soil backfill. Okay. And this is pressure due to the surcharge. Okay. So this is PA1. This is PA2 and given to us is height of retaining wall 4.25 plus 1 meter is equal to 5.25 meters uh, again this is uh, theta okay not p please uh, it's correction okay so uh, theta is equal to 0 degree phi is equal to uh, 35 degree okay coefficient of friction is 0 0.55 unit weight of soil the uh, density of soil is 18 kilonewton per meter cube okay base safe bearing capacity q is equal to 150 kilometer per meter square surcharge weight is 30 kilometer per meter square unit weight of surcharge is 18 kilometer per meter cube equivalent height of surcharge hs as we i explained uh, above is taken as ws divided by this density of surcharge which is equal to 1.67 so this fictitious height hs is 1.67 meters okay right now total height h with the fictitious height of the surcharge is equal to 6.92 meters okay now cp uh, ca is found to be 0 0.2709 and uh, cp is found to be 3.69 meters uh, as usual we are not considering uh, passive pressure in design okay now we will uh, select the preliminary dimensions of the section active pressure PA1 okay this is PA1 PA1 is equal to CA into density of soil into H this is H okay this is H okay into H into 0.5 right so that is equal to 67.2 uh, 67 kilonewton per meter right 
now active pressure pa 2 pa2 okay that is uh, ca into density of surcharge into hs into h okay h so that is equal to 42.75 kilo newton per meter so total uh, active pressure pa is equal to p1 plus p2 that is 109.95 assuming the width of base b equal to this formula that is 3.025 so we'll take a uh, width base equal to 3.25 meters right 3.25 meters okay now let us take the width of 2 as b by 3 that is 1.08 so we'll take width of 2 is equal to 1.1 meter okay 1.1 meter right now uh, assuming the stem thickness between h by 8 to h by 12 let us take h by 10 that is equal to 0.656 we'll take 0 0.65 0 0.65 okay now assume the thickness of the base slab d okay this is base slab d well between h by 12 to h by 15 we will take uh, h by 12 okay so h by 12 so that is equal to 0 0.579 we will assume it as 0 0.6 meters 0 0.6 meters okay so the total uh, width of the hill is this minus 1.1 minus 0.65 that is equal to 1.5 meters okay so this is how we have assumed a section now we have to check the overturning uh, stability and the sliding stability and then do the design right usually uh, you can reduce this uh, thickness of the stem over here it is 0.65 and minimum you can keep over here as 0.15 meters but we are keeping it uniform okay stability against overturning active pressure okay stability now first we have to find the overturning moment okay so this into h by 3 pa1 into h by 3 plus pa2 into h by 2 this will give you, give us the total overturning moment okay so total overturning moment is okay this is pa1 we know 67.2 pa2 42.75 Overturning moment is PA1 into H by 3 plus PA2 into H by 2 that is equal to 229.818 kN meter where H is equal to 5.25 okay meters right now we have to find the resisting moment so table for action of resultant vertical force for 1 meter width of wall above the about the edge of the toe so first we will find the dead width weight of the rectangular portion of the vertical stem okay vertical stem so this is 0.65 the height is 4.65 meter into 25 okay so this is equal to 75.56 weight of soil above the hill slab that is backfill plus surcharge okay so backfill plus surcharge so this is 4.65 plus 50 cs height 1.67 meter okay so that is the total height into 1.5 meters is the width of the hill okay right into 18 is the density of the soil okay this this is equal to 170.64 weight of base slab weight of base slab width into depth into 25 okay that is equal to 48.75 kilo newton okay so total uh, load turns out to be 294.95 kilo newton that's w which is our resultant okay now find the distance of cg from toe so this is 1.1 into 0.65 divided by 2 so this is 1.425 similarly these are the cg find the moment this into this is the moment so final uh, overturning moment uh, for final resisting moment is 613.48 okay so put this in this formula 0.9 into uh, resisting moment divided by overturning moment this is equal to this is a resisting moment this is overturning moment okay so that is equal to 2.402 which is greater than 1.4 so it is safe in overturning right now important point check the resultant loading eccentricity lies within the middle third of the footing so first we will have to find the distance of r that is x okay so we know the resisting moment we know the overturning moment that minus uh, that, uh, that divided by r 
will give the distance from uh, of r from the edge of the toe okay so this is 1.3 meters from the edge of the toe now we want to find x okay so x is equal to b minus x okay so b minus x is equal to 1.95 so x is equal to 1.95 meter our x is greater than b by 2 so e is equal to x minus b by 2 so that is equal to 0.325 meters so e is 0.325 meters and which is less than b by 6 that is 0.541 meters okay so our r falls in the middle third of the base footing right so it's okay base slab so it's okay it's fine now we have to do the check for stability again in sliding okay sliding force we know pa total is 109.95 ignoring uh, passive uh, passive pressure okay force due to passive pressure uh, resisting force is f into mu into r uh, mu is 0.55 r is 294.95 so mu uh, sorry f is equal to 162.22 so, aspect of uh, safety in sliding is uh, should be uh, the ratio should be less than 1.4, and this is found to be 1.327, which is less than 1.4. It should be greater than 1.4, okay, greater than or equal to 1.4. But this is less than 1.4, so it is not safe, okay. So we will have to provide a shear key, right? Same, assume a shear key size a by a at a distance 1.35 meters from the outer edge of the toe okay now this is our pressure diagram okay and this is another pressure diagram same as i explained above the above 300 and top 300 mm we are neglecting because this soil can be loose and um, there are chances that it will not give an effective it will not be effective in uh, capable of uh, pro for providing the passive force okay so uh, top 300 mm we are not considering in our calculation we will be considering only 0.7 and this is 0.4 we are assuming so h1 is a 0.7 plus a 0.4 that is equal to 1.1 meter h2 is 0.7 meters right so again p1 is found by this uh, pp sorry pp1 no? the pp1 uh, pp1 is cp into density of soil into h1 into h1 into 0.5 okay that is equal to 40.18 pp2 is equal to uh, cp into soil density into h2 into h2 into 0.5 so that is equal to 16.27 so resultant pp uh, due, uh, that is uh, which is developed due to this shear key is pa1 minus pp2 that is equal to uh, sorry pp1 minus pp2 uh, sorry yeah. pp1 minus pp2 pp1 minus pp2 that is 23.9 kilo newton okay now so our resultant uh, will become p uh, this is active pressure minus the passive pressure right so it will be pa minus pp so this will be 109.95 minus 23.91 f is known 162.22 into 0.9 this is 1.696 which is now greater than 1.4 so it is now safe in sliding okay stability uh, factor has been uh, satisfied for the case of sliding okay now the section has been uh, proved to be okay now we have to find the steel required for the respective bending moments and we have to do the check for the one way shear okay so for that first we have to find the uh, pressures right soil pressures and gross pressure and the net pressure right so this is our uh, pressure diagram this is the gross pressure q max q mean and this is the pressure q1 due to the weight of toe and this is the pressure q2 due to the weight of heel back field and the surcharge okay so q max and q mean can be found by this formula okay please remember this formula is only applicable when the resultant r falls within the middle third of the base slab okay so r we know e also we know we already have found eccentricity that is 0.325 so q max is 145.2 q minimum is equal to 36.3 okay now self at q1 the self-fit of weight, that is thickness of slab into 25, 
Okay, so 0.6 into 25 is 15 kilometer per meter square. Q2 simple, then that is uh, weight due to soil plus surcharge. So weight due to soil plus surcharge is the first our height is uh, 4.0. Total height we are taking as 6.92 minus the height depth of the uh, base level. Okay, that will be the height of the uh, backfill plus the 50 cs height of the surcharge, right? Into the unit weight. So that will give the pressure and this is due to the hill. Okay, the thickness of hill is 0.6 into 25. So this is the pressure developed due to the hill, right? Weight self-weight of hill. So total is 128.76 kilometer per meter square. Now you can find QF1 and QF2 by using interpolation. Q max is known, Q min is known. So QF2 is 108.34. QF1 is equal to 108.34. QF2 is uh, 86.56, right? So you know uh, all these four values, so you can find. So this is net pressure. So this is equal to Q max minus Q1, okay? Now QC1 is equal to uh, QF1 minus Q1, and uh, QC2 is equal to uh, Q2 minus QF2, and this is uh, Q2 minus Q min. Okay, so everything is found over here. Okay, so Q max minus Q1 is 130.2, QC1 is 93.34, QC2 is 42.2, Q2 minus Q min is 92.46. Okay, now we can see uh, from this uh, net pressure diagram that uh, the toe. Below the, uh, the uh, in case of toe, the, the pressure is upward. Okay, the soil pressure is going to be upward for which this uh, toe has to be designed. Okay, so the toe will deflect like this, and uh, this pressure is downward. The heel will deflect like this, and the active pressure will be acting in this direction. So the stem will deflect like this. Okay, so we here the tension will be at top. Uh, sorry, uh, tension will be at bottom. Over here, tension will be at top, and over here, the tension will be on the backfill side. Okay, so on tensions on tensions side, we are going to provide the main steel. Okay, so this uh, diagram is very important, so that we can know that on which side, on which face, we are going to give the we are going to provide the main steel. Okay, so first coming to the design of toe slab. Okay, so this is our toe slab. This is the upward pressure 130.2. This is 93.3. Divide this pressure into two parts, rectangle and, and triangle. So this will give a uh, bending moment, okay? For which we have to design the uh, toe, okay? So for bending moment, we have to take the section at the face of the stem, okay? So first we will find the bending moment. So bending moment is equal to 93.3 into 1.1 into 1.1 divided by 2, okay? Now, due to this tri uh, uh, rectangle, uh, sorry, triangle portion, it will be 130.2 minus 93.34, uh, okay, uh, into 1.1 .1 into 0.5 into 1.1 .1 into 2 by 3, right? So, this will give the another moment. So, total moment is 71.353 into 1.5 is the load factor. So, this is your factored moment, okay, for which we will have to provide the steel. Now, we have to do the check for shear okay so this is the face of the stem so for for check for shear we have to take a section at a distance effective depth d from the face of the support so over here right so first step is uh, this we have to find this d okay so our overall depth is 0.6 meters effective cover is point, uh, 0.075 meters that's 75 m right so Effective depth D is found to be 0.5 to 5 meters from the face of the stem. So this is 0.5 to 5 meters. So this will be 1.1 minus 0.5 to 5 meters. We have to find the shear force due to this upward force that, that which will be acting at this section, right? So you can find easily Q. You know this, you know this, you can find Q. Q is equal to 110.93. So Q is known, Q, Q max minus Q1 is known. You can take average of these two, okay, into 
uh, 1.5 this distance is 1.5 minus 0.525 okay into 1 meter so that is equal to 69.322 1.5 is the factor so this is your factored shear force right which will be acting at this section now we have to check for the one way shear for this shear force so find the nominal shear stress v divided by bd b is equal to 1 meter and d is equal to 525 five mm right so this is equal to 0.198 newton per mm square now we will be assuming pt equal to 0.15 percentage okay the for m20 uh, grade of concrete using table 19 fe uh, is 456 2000 uh, tau c is found to be 0.28 now tau c is greater than tau v so it is safe in one way shear so the next step is to find whether the section is under reinforced or reinforced so the minimum depth required we use the formula is mu limit is equal to 0.138 epsic bd square for m20 grade so d is found to be 196.92 mm provided is 525 mm so our section is uh, under singly under reinforced section okay so as the section is strictly under reinforced we can use this formula moment is known to us okay the moment found was this okay for this we can find the steel the steel turns out to be 578.14 mm square for one meter width strip and d is equal to 525 mm so pt is 0.11 okay but we have assumed pt equal to 0.15 percentage for the shear criteria right so we will calculate the steel required for 0.15 percent so ast uh, to be provided is equal to this 787.5 where pt consider is 0 0.5 0 0.15 percent right now uh, let us uh, use 16 mm diabar as main steel the spacing is found to be 255.18 okay we will provide 16 mm dia about 250 mm center to center spacing okay this is for uh the toe right so let us see the detail so this is the toe this is our main steel we are providing 16 mm about 20 250 mm center to center okay and from here at least for a distance ld extend this bar in the heel okay so ld i have taken as 50 times the diameter of the bar which is going to 800 mm okay now let us come to the design of heel okay okay design of heel so over here the pressure is 42.2 kilo meter per meter square this is 92.46 so again divide this into two parts rectangle and triangle okay and let us find the bending moment this bending moment is 42.2 into 1.5 into 1.5 by 2 okay we are taking we are finding the moment at this section right at the face of the stem okay so this is equal to that moment is going to equal to be this one right now let us take the triangle portion the 92.46 minus 42.2 okay into 1.5 into 0.5 into 1.5 into 2 by 3 right that, that is equal to 85.17 into 1.5 is the load factor this is your uh, 127.75 is the factored moment right for which we will design do the design or find the steel for the heel okay again check for one way shear d is equal to 5 point of 0.525 meters okay or 525 mm right now again this is the section at a distance d where we have to do the check for one way shear so this is 1.5 so this is 1.5 minus d okay all right so you can find q easily over here this is known this is known so you can find q q is 59.79 kilo meter per meter square okay so take average of this two okay and so that into this distance into one meter will give you the shear force so this distance is uh, 1.5 minus 0.525 right so 1.5 minus 0.525 into 1 meter so this is 74.2 into load factor 1.5 so this is your factored shear force which is acting at this section okay and now we have to check that the nominal shear stress is found to be less than tau c or not okay so nominal shear stress is 0.212 p 
PT provided again we are assuming PT to be provided as 0.15 percent. So tau C is 0.28 for M20 grid of concrete table 19. Okay. So tau C is greater than tau V, so it is safe in one way shear. Okay. Now let us check for the minimum depth. MU limit is equal to 0.138 FCK BD square. D is found to be 215.14, which is less than provided 525. So the section is singly under and full section. Okay. So we can use this formula. Moment is known to us. This is our moment. For that moment, the steel is found to be uh, 693.29, where width is 1 meter and depth is 525 mm. So PT is found to be 0.13. To okay percentage, but assumed is 0.15 for the shear criteria. So we will find the steel for this PT, right? So AST is equal to 787.5. Let us use 16 mm dia bar as main steel. Spacing found is 255. We will provide 16 mm about 250 mm center to center. Okay. So let us see that in the section. Okay. Okay, in hill the tension is at top. Okay, so the main steel will be at top. So this is the main steel, 16 dia about 250 mm center to center, and from here extend this bar for a length of LD, and LD I am taking as uh, 800, the 50 times the diameter of the bar. Okay, now okay the uh, last check which we have to do that well, the steel which we have provided in uh, uh, to and hill should be greater than est minimum okay so est minimum is found to be 720 and we are providing uh, more than 787.5 so it is safe and okay right now coming to the design of vertical stem okay so vertical stem the height of the stem is 4.65 meters okay so this force from here this height okay this is the pressure uh, due to soil which will be exerting uh, the uh, passive active uh, active pressure on the wall and this height will be uh, for the surcharge okay this is a pressure diagram for the surcharge so that uh, so the active pressure for this height okay of this diagram will be exerting uh, the pressure on the retaining wall, right? So let us see the detailed calculation. Uh, effective depth D is uh, 650 minus 75. This is 650, right? With uh, the depth of the stem we have, we have taken is uh, 0.65 meters, that is 650 mm. 75 mm is the effective power. So the effective depth is 575 mm, okay? So moment at the base of the stem. So this is the critical section where the moment is to be found. Okay. So moment at the base of the stem. Okay. So height of the stem is found to be 465 meters. 465 meters. C is 0 0.27. Uh, this is 4.65, right? 4.65. Okay. C is equal to 0 0.2709. Uh, unit weight of soil is 18 kilonewton per meter cube. Uh, unit weight of surcharge is 18 kilonewton per meter cube. And HS, 50 cells height is 1.67 meters, okay? So, moment is found by this formula, okay? So, you have to take this height. H, you are going to take this height, right? So, we get the moment, factor moment as uh, 254.36 kilo newton, okay? Kilo newton meter, okay? So this is how we find the uh, bending moment, okay? For which bending moment? This is a section, right? This is a section. So this is the bending moment which this stem will have to resist, okay? Now, once you know the uh, bending moment, you can find the steel required. That is 128. 5.5 mm square okay where d is equal to 575 mm it uh, ast minimum is 0.12 percent of bd and that is equal to a 780 mm square we are providing more than this so it is okay so we will be using 16 mm dia bars the spacing is found to be 156.33 uh, let us provide 16 mm dia bars about 150 mm center to center spacing right so let us see the detail okay 
we are providing a 16 mm about uh, 150 mm center to center okay so this uh, steel area we are taking it up to the mid height of the wall and then we'll be doing the curtailment okay right now check for uh, one way here at a distance d from the base okay at a distance d from the base that is d is your 575 mm at a distance 575 mm from the base we will take a section for the check for one base here okay so this is the formula for finding the shear force okay so shear force is this is factor shear force that is found to be 11015 where h is equal to 4.65 meters right so nominal shear stress is 0 0.192 and uh, pt okay pt is found to be uh, 0.22375 this is your AST, okay? So PT is 0.2235. For this corresponding PT, tau C is 0.412 for M20 grade from table 19. Now tau C is greater than tau V, so it is safe in one way shear, okay? So the section is uh, safe in one way shear, and we have also found the required steel. Now come to the curtailment of the bar. The curtailment of bars in vertical stem. The curtailment of bar can be done in two stages, one third and two third height of the stem above the base, as shown in the steel detailing below. The maximum spacing of the main steel should be lesser of three times a D, that is equal to 1725 mm or 300 mm. Okay, so we are curtailing half the steel at the mid height of the stem and from there we can see we are just providing 16 mm about 300 mm center to center okay the spacing cannot be greater than 300 mm center to center because this is our main steel okay as explained above okay now temperature and shrinkage reinforcement est minimum is 780 mm square okay Two third of the uh, two third area of the distribution steel is provided on the exposed face of the retaining wall, as this face is directly in contact with the environment, and the remaining one third uh, on the face of the backfill. Okay, so this is your face which is exposed to the environment. This is face which is exposed to the backfill. Okay, so maximum uh, two third of the uh, distribution steel will be provided on this face and the remaining one third will be on, on, uh, provided on this phase well. but and another important point is okay that the distribution steel the spacing maxi the maximum spacing of the distribution steel should be lesser of five times a d that is two eight seven five or four fifty mm okay so our spacing for distribution steel should not be greater than four fifty mm so we will provide over here in the below one third 8 mm about 100 mm center to center at the uh, middle one third will provide 8 mm about 200 mm center to center and at the top one third we will provide 8 mm about 300 mm center to center on this side we will provide uh, in the at the bottom one third we will provide 8 mm about 200 mm center to center at middle third we will provide 8 mm about 400 mm center to center and at the top one third we will provide 8 mm about uh, 400 mm center to center okay so this is how you can do the detailing of the retaining wall and this steel is extended in the shear key okay so this is very important okay you have to extend the steel in shear key so that the because shear key also requires reinforcement right now this steel this again a, a distribution steel which i am providing at as 10 mm about 300 mm center to center and this is also the distribution steel, okay, which I am providing 10 mm about 300 mm center to center, right? Okay. The PDF and this video is uploaded on website mmsprogramcivil.com. So you can uh, study this example at your ease, okay?